uh, for the wildlife activities required, it states that you must perform at least three activities designed to encourage the wildlife management. Wildlife activities include habitat control, erosion control, predator control, providing supplemental water, supplemental food, providing shelter, and census counts to determine the population. Again, three of those activities. Just some of the examples of this are going to be habitat control. As you can see, this is far different from timber. On timber, you're wanting to keep clear fence lines. On wildlife, you not, don't necessarily want the clear fence lines. You're going to want them to have overgrowth because that creates a habitat for certain animals. As well as you, it's kind of hard to see, it's kind of dark, but this tree has a burrow in the bottom. Of course, leaving those present on the property also encourages habitat for animals as well. Erosion control. Obviously, nature has its way of, of having the erosion, and we're going to want to preserve that habitat as much as we can. So helping nature along a little bit and... Uh, creating some type of control of minimizing that is going to be beneficial to your property. And keep in mind as we go, these things that she's talking about are the things that the statute sets out as the seven wildlife management activities. Keep in mind, you only have to do three of those seven, okay? Only three of those seven. And, like and it, you, might be, it might be a certain three this year and a different three a couple of years from now, but just keep that in mind. And each of those seven have numerous activities under each one. So you just have to pick one under three of those seven, one activity. And a lot of you might be thinking as we go through this, we'll already do that. That's wonderful. We just need to get some proof of it um, with that you can attach with your plan and, um, and you would already probably qualify. Because you'll notice as we get through these that you'll be like, well, I do that. And, and on top of that too, it, it falls back just like timber maintenance. Um, just because you do it once doesn't mean it's good forever. Uh, erosion control, uh, up and down roads, um, in a creek bank, you know, depending on the rainfall, you may have to go back and, and strengthen up your erosion issue or even your roads, just hit them with a the tractor. Um, just by maintaining that stuff, you have to, again, it, it falls just under, uh, like timber, provide proof that you're maintaining what you've already done. Predator control. These images were taken off of local game cameras, so I'm sure you've probably witnessed these yourself. We've got some bobcats, coyotes, and our favorite, wild hogs. <laughs> but this, and, it, wild hogs are not a wildlife that you can manage. We're not wanting to keep that. Except for the predator <laughs> control. And there, there's still another a long list of these. I mean, right. uh, skunks, possum, snakes. Um, there's... The list is a lot larger than this, just a few examples. So yeah, this is just some examples. Of course, you might have your own that you're uh, managing. So this is just an example. Of course, you can see this trap right here. This is going to be a, a good way to prove that uh, you're trying to manage, or manage that predator. And the predator controls, you can, that can be, a, like uh, Charlie mentioned, there are several different ways to do predator control, okay? Uh, you can obviously trap the hogs or trap the coons or whatever. You can also, uh, you know, uh, go out there and, and, and hunt the coyote or shoot the coyote or, or what have you. So there are different methods of predator control. Poisoning is not something that you can do by yourself, however. You have to have a certified person come in and do it for you. Supplemental food. There's various ways that you can uh, provide uh, supplemental food. Um, there's various types of uh, feeders that you can buy, but you don't necessarily have to do the feeders. The bottom one is just planting a rye, a rye field. And, of course, there's probably different, all kinds of information you can get from these guys to assist you in your options in that. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, different, I mean, there's different agencies, there's different organizations that, that promote food plots um, that have more information. There's, our website is, is full of valuable information on, on pretty much everything um, that you need. So, um, yeah, there's different species that you can plant for food plots. Um, and, and even providing that it kind of falls under habitat, habitat control, but it falls under different categories. But by many tank and even the fence rows, um, that's also providing supplemental food. There's, there's other ways to do some different food activities. Um, 
And that's one thing I've been recommending to people is, is just because everybody's like, well, I don't want to do corn, you know, I, I've been recommending to people, you know, these five gallon spin feeders, you can get them, you know, fairly cheap, put a bag of hen scratch in them. That's Milo, cracked corn, you're feeding birds, you're feeding different species other than just deer. Um, a lot of people, their mindset is on deer and uh, game animals, but there, there's other ways to do just for wildlife, you know, not just corn. You can do hen scratch, other different methods of, of feeding. So. And doing the wildlife, I guess what the main thing you need to determine is what are you gearing your plan for? What species are you targeting? So that obviously is going to determine what type of supplemental food you're going to be using. So not ev like he said, not everyone's going to be geared toward the same species. Supplemental water. Obviously, not everyone's going to have a natural water source on their property. Um, so the, pro the ones you can see in here, the they're, they're, bottom two are man-made. You're going to have a man-made pond right here that's going to be of substantial size, but then you're also going to have a dig-out as well that is just out in the property randomly just so the wildlife have somewhere to come and get that supplemental water. Now, for proper, if we go through a dry season, which we have not experienced, <laughs> um, the, the top one is what they're, uh, it's called a guzzler, catching the rain and put it out there so you can assist when we do have some, some dry seasons and just assist with that. Or if you have a property that doesn't have a creek or a pond, that's something else that you can do uh, to put out, and that's just one one example. There, there when uh, if you Google guzzler, or I think uh, go to images. There's a there's a plethora of, of images. This is just one we pulled out yesterday, um, and and that might help you provide supplemental water if you don't have a natural spring or a source like that, Charlie. Yeah, a lot of times, um, you know, water is generally not a problem in East Texas. For deer and uh, some of your larger animals, you know, they can, you know, travel long distance to get to water. But some of your other animals, smaller animals, their home ranges are very small. So if you want them on your property, uh, you know, the smaller uh, mammals and things, then providing the guzzler to provide some sort of a, of a water source or just a dig out, like was mentioned. This one down here in the bottom, our bottom right, just, uh, you know, just go out with a tractor with a or the uh, front end loader and just scoop out a spot to hold some water and uh, not going to help a lot in a really dry year but just a normal year it'll it'll hold water through you know short periods of time where we don't have rainfall just try so, to locate them where you're going to catch some water just don't get that yeah go out there and dig a hole no it's yeah. uh, you gotta you gotta think about where you put it yeah. common sense yeah and, and the other thing <laughs> is keep in mind supplemental water may not be one of the seven activities that you want to do you don't have to do water, okay? Just remember that. We're just three of these seven things. And it's not just having a pond. It's not just having a creek saying, okay, I'm providing water. It's doing something extra. It's developing a pond, improving, making it larger, doing an activity that's going to make it better than it already was. See, because you may have an existing pond and you may have an issue where you need to control some washout and erosion because eventually that'll silt your pond in. So that's, that's a qualified activity actually to not only uh, qualify under erosion control, but also to help that supplemental water source by protecting it or the creek from, from washout, uh, not washout, but, but silting in and things like that. Okay, Ash. 